Let me share with you three of my best all-time driver videos. You know, driving doesn't have to be that complicated, especially when you get some of the secrets that I'm gonna share with you here. Let's go and get started. All right, pretty nice drive there. 301, not even loosened up there a little bit, not my best club head speed, but a perfect smash, I meaning I hit it really nice and solid and it's very easy to do. So this is my brand new, just testing out this Ping G425. Pretty excited to hit some of the first shots with this. Let's talk about how you're gonna get some power. How are you gonna make the driver swing easy? You know, if you wanna hit it far, that's great, but how do we do it in an easy way? Well, one of the mistakes that I see is players have been told, and I used to feel the same thing myself, is to keep that right elbow kind of tucked in and down in the back swing. And what happens is when I tuck that elbow in in the back swing, it ends up kind of cutting off my shoulder turn. So I almost used to feel like when I hit it much shorter and much more inconsistent than I do now, I'd feel like I didn't really move that elbow much in the back swing. I just kind of folded it up and then I just let it go. Felt really consistent. It felt like it was a very simple move, but I just didn't have the power and it really wasn't any more consistent. It's actually less consistent than my swing now. So I felt like I'm just gonna bend that right arm early, keep the elbow tucked in in the back swing. The reason I did this is because I always heard, well, you wanna have that elbow tucked in the down swing. So I figured, well, it's easier to tuck it in the back swing and just keep it there than it is to do it the other way. But that just kind of sucks away all your power. What you wanna feel like is you wanna feel like almost like you're reaching up and there's almost a hammer up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab that handle of the hammer way above my head. I can let my elbow fly out away from my body like Jack Nicholas and hundreds of other players that have played on the PGA Tour that are fantastic ball strikers. Now I've got all this space and all this width and from there, then I'm gonna rotate through. And it's actually that, that opening up and that rotating that drives the elbow in and keeps it tucked at your side in the downswing. So we don't wanna feel like we tuck it and rotate like this in the backswing and don't really make a turn. I wanna get loaded up, get that hammer up here and then rotate in the downswing. That's what's gonna tuck it in there. That's gonna be the best of both worlds. Now, a lot of players will tell me, Clay, I'd love to have that nice high backswing, but I'm just not flexible enough. Well. What it is, is we're not flexible enough if our shoulders don't rotate and our arms rotate flat. So if I feel like, again, I'm turning flat around my body, this is already very tight for me and my shoulders haven't rotated much. That would be an incredibly short backswing and I feel really tight in my chest. Like it's almost like even cramping up here in my left pec because it's so tight. Well, that's because I've rotated the wrong way. Now notice what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feel like that elbow comes off my chest and instead of my hands going back this way, my hands are going up. At the same time, I'm just gonna move my hips. Let my hips turn and all of a sudden, I've got a lot more power. I've gotten a lot higher in my backswing and it actually feels looser through my chest. I could actually hold this position here for quite a while without wearing out. That's what gives you a lot of good power. So it's grab something off this top shelf up here like a hammer and then from there, I'm gonna rotate my body. That's when the elbow is gonna tuck in. You're gonna be hitting it really hard when you do that. So watch this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and do one the wrong way, which is fold the arm. And then on the next one, I'm gonna do it the right way. So here's the wrong way, arm fold, no shoulder turn. I hit that one absolutely as solid as I could. Felt like a million bucks. But again, it's not very consistent. Even though it felt like I was doing less, that was a weak slice. Carried it 190. Swing speed went all the way down, you know, what, 20 miles an hour slower on that swing. So not only was it, it, it fools you. It feels more consistent, but in reality, it's not more consistent, and it's a whole heck of a lot weaker. Now I'm gonna do that kind of arms up, shoulders rotated swing, like I'm grabbing something off the top shelf and then rotating through. Let's see how that one works. A lot more power, and again, a lot more club head speed, nice little tight draw there, straighter path, or straighter ball shape than the one before. 24 miles an hour more club head speed, 311 yards, almost 100 yards, over 100 yards farther carry. So it's just being an athlete. If I don't rotate my body that way, I can't be athletic. Now, another misconception with this, the second piece of this is feeling like, I've lost my tee here. I need to grab my tee real quick. Got so much power, I'm blowing the tees off the hitting area. But uh, here when we're making our downswing, we actually wanna get that right shoulder coming through the shot. 
So when I load it up, I get everything turning behind me. As I go through, I'm rotating everything through. When I did that kind of lever action, it's like nothing moved. My shoulders didn't move and all everything is folded up and unfolded. Again, seems simple, it just really doesn't work. Instead of that fold unfold, where my shoulder doesn't move, I wanna turn my shoulder back, grab something off the shelf, turn my shoulder through the shot. And the key here is to feel like your right shoulder's facing the target when you come on through. Let's give that a whirl. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing, grab something off the shelf, rotate through. Oh, I actually thought I hit a little ball there, must have read the, the club moving <laughs> through. When I come through, I'm gonna point my right shoulder as far as I can to the target. All right, let's try one out here. There we go. Not gonna hit one a lot better than that. Nice little draw again. You look at those three shots, they're almost overlaying each other. There's three separate shots there where I had the good swing. Again, high club head speed, 307 yards, very consistent smash factor. Everything was really nice and solid. So it's about getting rid of that little lever action with the arm and letting your body rotate. That's the true secret to having power. Now, I bet you've been told that when you wanna hit this golf ball, you want your shoulders to be square. I'm gonna talk about if you do this the wrong way, how that could be throwing the brakes on your swing speed, how it could cause a chicken wing and for you to get all arms when you're trying to hit the driver. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump right in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple swings. I'm gonna talk about the idea of keeping my chest a little bit more closed. And then Q's gonna read some of the flight scope numbers, see what the swing speed is doing. And I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of opening versus closing with your shoulders and which is right for you. All right, so let me go ahead and jump in and, in and hit one here. And the first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have this sensation of keeping my shoulders square. And we've probably all heard this before. We feel like as we're coming down to contact, if I'm looking from down the line, my shoulders could kind of be pointing toward the target. The idea is that if my shoulders are pointing straight, I'm gonna hit it straight. If my shoulders are pointing to the right, I'm gonna hit a little bit of a draw. If my shoulders are open, I'm gonna hit a little bit of a fade. We're gonna kind of bust that myth a little bit here, but let me go ahead and start to swing some and, and see what this means. So what I usually see players doing is not opening enough with their body. So as you come into contact, I see a lot of this where the shoulders are closed, trying to hit that draw, but look how my hips haven't opened very much. My chest or my shirt buttons, my rib cage, however you want to think about that, is also pointing toward the ball. And when I do that, when I don't open with my body, what ends up happening is I have to push across the body with my hands and club and arms. So I'm trying to generate swing speed by pushing the club across my body. I get that chicken wing and I tend to get a loss of club head speed. So let me go ahead and hit one like that. I'm gonna swing and try to keep my body kind of square to the ball. Again, that idea of hitting the draw and let's see what happens. Yeah, so I kind of pulled it. I really felt like the face was closing down very quick. It was kind of hard to time up the exact sequencing of that. I feel like the next one I may have hit straight, then maybe one to the right, then the left, kind of all over the place. But Q, what was my club head speed? And you know, what was my total distance, my carry distance, those kind of numbers? Uh, so club head speed was 94 miles per hour. Uh, total distance was 243, but it only carried 187. Not really your best strike there. Yeah, so it's kind of like a low hooking rolling shot. So it really just kind of rolled most of the distance, but only, only carried 190. Again, let me go ahead and try to do that again. I'm kind of locking the body, keeping everything square to the ball, and then I'm kind of pushing across with my hands. Very, very common. I see this all the time. Yeah, and again there, I felt like I tried to not hook it to the left. And again, my club face is going from open to close. It's just so much arms. I really can't square it up very consistently. What was the numbers on that one? So 95.9 miles per hour in the club head speed. A uh, total distance uh, was pretty much the same, 241.6. Okay. So we see how inconsistencies can happen when that's going on. We see how that doesn't necessarily give me a draw every single time. We see how it slows down the club head speed a lot. So what's the truth behind this? What should we be doing? Well, in reality, what we wanna be doing is opening up the body a little bit as we're coming through contact. So as I come through contact, my hips should be opening up. I'm using the momentum of my body to get, my, get everything rotating on through, and then my hands and arms are releasing out in front. If I look at my rib cage, so if I get rid of my, my hands and arms, if I look at my rib cage as I'm coming through contact, it's actually pointing out in front like this. So my ribs are opening up, my sternum is opening up. That's what the best players in the world are doing. Their rib cage on average is about 20 degrees open to the golf ball. Now what gives the illusion that my face 
or my shoulders are square is because I'm in this position and then my left shoulder protracts or drags across my body to make everything look pretty square. That looks really square when you're going from down the line, but if I take my left arm, you'll see my rib cage is actually open. So your body, your big muscles of your body, my legs, my hips, my entire upper body all the way up to my shoulders is square, or is actually open. My left arm is just protracted, kind of cinched across my left pec there. If you want to feel this yourself, put your arm straight out and then drag your arm to where it's kind of across your chest like this. You'll feel it pinching against your, your left bicep. That's kind of where you're at at impact. As I bend forward and open up, that's basically the impact position. So that's the reason it looks more square when you're looking from the down the line view. So let's go ahead and do one more here where I go ahead and open up like I should be and let's see what those numbers change. Again, I'm gonna feel like I can really swing hard and release on out in front when I'm doing this. There we go, I actually missed hit that one a little bit off the toe, but we're gonna see the swing speeds way up, the distance is way up. It's gonna be a totally different shot. What are the numbers on that one, Q? Uh, club head speed 120, total distance about 307. Okay, so it picked up you know, 20 something miles an hour swing speed, driving it you know, 50, 60 yards farther, whatever. We all get that it's going a lot farther when I do it that way. We all get that that looks like a much better swing and we understand that the hands and arms aren't kind of flipping when I'm doing that. So the big question, how the heck do I do that? What do I need to feel? Well, a big piece of that is what we talked about with the left bicep there and the left pec, your left arm. So if I grab my chest and I have my fingertips kind of under my armpit here, I want to feel like I have my left arm across my body until I'm kind of smushing my fingertips. So if I'm looking at the, the bicep, the inside of my left arm and my pec or this muscle here that's your chest, I want to feel like that's really tight. Like if I tried to pull that out of there, I couldn't get my hand out. It's cinched in there really nice like that. That's the feeling that you want to have when you're coming through contact with your left arm. So as my body rotates open, I'm really tight and connected there. You hear pros all the time talking about being connected. That's the feeling that they're having. This is nice and connected. The shoulder's sturdy, it's tight. This is gonna control my face angle, control my hand path. That's why I was getting those shots that are going all over the place. My face angle was all, you know, left up to its own, you know, momentum and that kind of thing when I didn't have this connected. Now that I have this connected in, I can really be a lot more consistent. Also, when I'm doing this, the second swing key is, as I rotate on through, feel like everything is facing the target. In your mind, if you're one of these players that doesn't get open enough, you want to feel like at, at contact, you're like this. So your hips, your shoulder, your chest, everything's facing the target. And in reality, it won't be. In reality, it's going to look much more like what you would see the pros doing, where I'm really opening my body, getting my hips to clear out of the way. So if you keep that left armpit connected, if you feel like at contact, you're facing the target, it's going to lead to a whole lot more consistent shots and a lot more swing speed. And even better, it's gonna get rid of that chicken wing with your arm pushing across your body. Let's go ahead and try it out. There we go, that was a lot better. Right down the left center. Numbers are gonna be pretty good on that one. So what did it say on that one, Q? Uh, club had 120, total distance went all the way up to 343. Okay, 343, I'm not gonna do much better than that. Now, Q, this brings me another question that I have all the time. You know, when I'm talking about this with players, I get them to open up more. I get rid of that chicken wing, but sometimes the ball starts to go out to the right. What would you recommend if players start to slice when they're doing this? Right, so a lot of times when we get to where we're opening up the body, what happens is when we're, we're opening up the chest, the arms and the hands and everything are gonna come out with us because we're used to coming in. If you come into where everything's nice and, and square, club face, chest, everything uh, is really square to the ball, we're used to bringing that club kind of out in front of the body there. And if we keep that same relationship that we're used to, that we're comfortable with, when we're opening up, now we're just gonna come over the top. Yeah, just like that, we're gonna be coming over the top. So what we wanna do is we wanna feel, have that same feeling like what Clay was talking about. You have the arm really cinched to the chest. You really wanna feel like it's really pushing up against your chest here. And that's gonna help you keep the club behind you more so you can swing more on plane because if you don't, that's where those big slices or pulls are gonna end up coming from. So how about you hit one where you're really trying to put all those things together, where the club's really coming from the inside nicely. Okay, yeah, so where he's showing there is, if you keep doing this motion, 
you're almost going to feel like with this new swing that you're getting way back in here. The club's coming away from the inside. But in reality, when you open up more, that's going to be nice and square. So let me go ahead and hit one. And now we'll have kind of all the pieces. You'll be opening up, you're getting rid of the chicken wing, you're adding the club head speed. But now with that arm cinched and the club feeling like it's well in here, now when you open up, it's going to be square. You're not going to get those slices. So let's go ahead and try one out here again. All right, hit that one well. So the numbers are gonna be really good on that one. Basically square face, square path. I opened up my body, but then I also got that club coming from the inside. That way when I opened up, everything is nice and straight, not going left. So what were the numbers on that last one there, Q? 119.6 uh, club head speed. Total distance was 327. Okay, awesome. So hit that one really good. Nice and square on it. Now let's recap on what we need to do here. Number one, we have to get the body opening up. If you're one of the players that stands up everything's too square, maybe the chicken wing, feel like at contact, your body is facing. Notice how my body's rotated around here, my hips, my shoulders. You're gonna feel like this at contact. It's never gonna happen. That's not anywhere near where you're really gonna be, but that's the feeling that you're gonna have. Number two, I want you to feel like, so you can come from the inside, this left bicep is pinched against your left pec. If you tucked your hand under there, you almost couldn't yank your hand out. That's how tight it's gonna be as you're coming into contact. And then number three, the idea of feeling like you're swinging way to the right is actually the right idea for you because as you start to open up more, that's gonna be square, nice and straight through the ball and you're gonna have so much more club head speed, the distance is gonna go way up. Now let's be honest, everybody wants to hit a big ball and it doesn't matter if you're driving at 200 yards right now or 300 yards right now, one of the easiest way, ways to pick up strokes, to get to the par fives and two, to have short irons into par fours, is to hit, up, hit the ball farther. So adding 20 or 30 yards to your drives would lower your score as quickly as anything out there. Now, if we're gonna hit it far, there's no point in working on anything else until we can get the hips moving correctly. So the very first piece, and what I was told kind of growing up and what was kind of in vogue, what was popular then, was to keep this right knee really flexed not let that move at all. And I'm gonna keep that flex all the way in the backswing. Now when you do that, that ends up locking up your hips a little bit. Very difficult to get your hips to rotate unless you're super, super flexible, which I'm not, you're probably not. You're not gonna get those hips to rotate very much keeping that knee locked. Now the idea there, the idea there and why it was popular then is because that's gonna help you to get this big stretch between your upper and lower body. Well, that's great in theory, but you can get that same amount of stretch if you go ahead and let your hips turn. You're still gonna just get more shoulder turn. Your hip, the distance between your hips and shoulders will be the same. You're just gonna wind up a whole heck of a lot better. So getting that right leg to go ahead and straighten up, getting those hips to turn in the backswing is one of the biggest distance keys that you can have. So as I set up here, instead of keeping this right leg locked like this, a lot of flex in it here, I'm gonna go ahead and feel like in my backswing that leg can straighten up I wanna go ahead and let my knee straighten this way. Now, when you're looking at this, what that ends up doing is it allows my hip to turn back behind my body. The more my hips turn, the more power I can get. When we're looking from down the line, you're gonna see the same thing. Now, it's not a sway, it's not this. I'm turning my hip, I imagine somebody had a, a, a rope tied to my hip and they're standing back there. They're pulling that rope and getting me to turn. Look at this big hip turn now. Now I'm gonna make that big back swing like a Justin Thomas or uh, Davis Love the Third, without even really having to think about it too much, even, even if I'm limited a little bit in my flexibility. So that's piece number one. I wanna make sure that in the backswing, I get those hips to rotate. Let's go ahead and try one out here. I'll go ahead and give it a good rip, make that big, free, big hip turn in the backswing. There we go, hit that one pretty hard. And I really felt like on the backswing, I gave myself plenty of time. Again, don't rush this. Give yourselves plenty of time to let those hips turn and then go, come on through to a good full finish. Now piece number two is I can't get a big hip turn and then just stay back there, right? I don't wanna get this big hip turn and then just stop on my downswing. I wanna get that big hip turn and then on my downswing, I wanna get my hips to open from the down the line view. That's what a lot of people call the two cheeker, meaning that when I come to contact, you can see both cheeks here when you're looking from behind. Now that's exactly what all the great players have. That's what all the pro, pros have. But again, a lot of this has to come, comes down to what you're doing with your knees. If 
my knees stay square to the target in my downswing, like a lot of players, what I'll do is I'll stand up, I'll flip this club and my hips won't rotate very much. So that would be kind of square knees. What I want you to feel like these knees are kind of like a piston. In the backswing, here's my right knee, here's my left knee. In my backswing, my knees do this. As this leg straightens and it allows my hip to turn, this leg comes forward. So this leg's going that way, this knee's going back, this knee's going forward. In the downswing, I'm doing the exact opposite. My knees are going that way. So again, this right knee is coming forward toward this camera. This left knee is straightening and getting out of the way there. I wanna see a little space in here as my legs come through to allow my hips to open. That's the only way you're gonna get the two cheeker is if you get a little space in your knees coming this direction. So in the back swing, think you want a little bit of space, meaning that as I turn, I should be able to take my golf club and put it through my knees there and have plenty of space. In the down swing, as I come through the shot, I should be able to take a club and do the exact same thing. What we wanna guard against is locked right knee in the back swing and then a stand up. In both those cases, I wouldn't be able to put a club. My knees would be in the way of each other. I wouldn't be able to slip my club through there. So let's do a few practice swings now where I feel like in the downswing, my knees do this and I really get opened up as I'm coming through there, just like we're seeing with the pros. So we've done a few back swings. We're gonna do five or 10 reps in the downswing and then really commit to getting that good full finish as you swing on through. There we go, hit that one great. Now, once we get those knees moving properly, I'm gonna have the power now. If I let my body load up and then unload, I have the potential, I have the power to hit some big tee shots. One thing that this is gonna help a ton with, and what almost every golfer I see gets wrong, is releasing the club in front. So even on a driver, if I was to choke up on this driver here, most of the time I'll see players stand up, lock their knees, and then they flip with a driver. So when I would be contacting this golf ball, and this is really important here, this is something that I see every single golfer would get a whole lot better at golf if they get this one thing right. So if I lock my hips, I lock my knees, I stand up and I flip, meaning that in relationship to my forearms, this kind of triangle between my forearms and my shoulders, my club is splitting my forearms already when I'm at contact. All the best players, doesn't matter if you're hitting a driver all the way down to a pitching wedge, what I see the best players doing is opening their body the driver is lagging behind and even at contact because their body's angled back the driver may be straight up and down but it's on the front side of that triangle and it doesn't actually split the forearms until in front of the contact point in front of the golf ball so they're never really releasing this driver until out in front now if i get my knees moving properly that sets me up in a position to where i can release this club in front if my knees move improperly I have no other choice but to flip it too early. That's what I call the straight line release. Now let me play a preview of a video, one of the best videos on the straight line release, and let me talk about this, because if we can get these two concepts, you can get your knees moving, get your legs moving, get a lot of power in there, and then you can learn to, learn to release that power in front of the golf ball instead of at the golf ball. Man, that's a pretty daggone good golf swing. So I'll play a preview of that video here in just one second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the link, the card that pops up on the screen. If you don't see that card, don't worry about that. Go down below to, to the description below this video, click the link down there, and you'll get instant access. So let's pair up this great hip turn, this great hip movement, with now releasing the club out in front, and it's gonna look like the majority, or pretty much all the pro swings that you see on the PGA Tour. Let's go and get started. A common misconception I see is that we want to create lag and we just want to hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're going to talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're going to fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms. So the, 
by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're going to see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're going to see tons.